This episode of the Oh No 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 podcast is sponsored by Dynamic Industrial Services, the Rope Access Specialists. Every week we talk about the rover's latest attempts to climb the SPFL ladder, but sometimes even a ladder won't reach. The IS are specialists in working at height, offering maintenance, inspection, repair and more, right across Scotland. So if you need a rope access specialist and you want a premiership service, visit dynamicindustrialservices.co.uk to find out more. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Oh No 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 podcast, where tonight we're going to be looking ahead to Saturday's trip along the M8 to Capelo, where Rafe Rovers will face Dougie Emery's Morton. My name's Robbie Weir, um, and with second place secured and the hosts stuck in mid-table mediocrity, uh, we've got all to to look forward to in this end-of-season special. Now, as I say, I'm your host, Robbie Weir, and tonight I'm delighted to be joined by two regulars. We've got firstly Scott Fleming. How are you doing, Scott? Yeah, all good. Cheers. Good stuff. And uh, Christina beat you as well. How are you, Christina? I'm all good too, thank you. There was a nervous pause there because I thought your connection was going to go. We've had the, <laughs> the classic Riverside technical gremlin striking again, but fortunately she's still here. Now, of course, you'll see uh, video viewers will see um, we've got two special guests this evening. We've got both of our new supporters, liaison officers, joining us tonight. We've got Nicola Forrest and Craig Smith. Craig, just firstly, how are you doing? Fantastic. It's good to be on. I know we got the, we got the invite uh, a couple of weeks ago, so I thought we'd, we'd take you up on it fairly soon. So uh, that's good. good. It's not what you were saying earlier on. You were telling me that you didn't want to come on Twitter. I was only joking. It's just I know, uh, I know. But it gives you a hard time about it anyway. <laughs> and we've got the ever-present Nicola Forrest. How are you doing, Nicola? All oh, good, thanks. Pleased to be here as well. Good stuff. Uh, I'll just start with the both of you. Firstly, Craig, just to, to turn to you, um, just your thoughts on the season so far. Well, obviously, off, off and on the pitch has been absolutely fantastic in terms of sitting second in the league and challenging for the, the title up to last week and couldn't really go any better, to be honest. Um, in terms of the league position, off the pitch though as well, I think everybody's noticed it's been a right sea change in terms of what's happening off the pitch in terms of commercial side, social media, all the rest of it. So to be honest, it's been one of the best seasons and I've been supporting Rover since the late 80s and it's been up there with the kind of early 90s seasons, you know, when we're in the Prem. The first time around, it's a lot of hope and a lot of optimism about the club. So it's, it's really been great to be involved and that's kind of why we wanted to be in the, the SLO position as well because it's the club's going places, you know, so it's great. I look forward to it. Yeah. And uh, Nicola, how about for you? How has your experience has been this season? Yeah, I would just echo what, what Craig said. It's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster, I think, as a as a fan and I think especially since since Christmas and we've we've had this kind of um promotion carrot dangled in front of us and I think that's maybe sometimes given us that wee bit kind of push forward. But you know, I think we need to just step back and look and actually see how far we've come and Right, fair enough. We're, we've maybe not um, secured first place in in our division, but my goodness, what a what a roller coaster it's been, and it's been fantastic to um, to obviously watch watch the team and um, as Craig said, the developments at the club this last um, last season has just been been phenomenal. So yeah, really really pleased to be a part of that, and I'm sure there's there's lots more to come, and really looking forward to it. Yeah, I I think you would struggle to find anyone that would disagree with those uh, sentiments. Craig, I'm just going to come back to yourself. Just that we've obviously just with you being special guest tonight, we'll chat a bit about your new role and and. But just to come to you firstly, just can you give us a bit of backstory about yourself and Rovers and how you got involved with the club? I well, as I say, it was kind of late eighties. Um, I'm forty two now, so you could probably work at my age. I was, a, I was a young boy when I first went on to start part, but my dad was an actual Aberdeen fan, so I stayed in Kirkcaldy all my life. He was an Aberdeen fan. He took me to the Race Rovers Aberdeen friendly. I don't know if any of you guys maybe remember it. 1989, 91-3-1. Charles Nicholas scored for Aberdeen. Uh, that was my first taste to, to start Spark and I thought I loved it. So 
early 90s, started going as a fairly regular. I was selling programmes as a kid and was uh, supported them through the kind of Premier League and um, through the European, and obviously the, the League Cup and stuff like that as well. So, and then of my background, basically, I don't know if you guys know, but I was a um, sports reporter for the Courier for many years. So I was down at Starts Park covering games a lot. And um, so I was kind of down there in the press box. So it was a kind of odd, odd situation. I covered the Ramsons Cup game at Easter Road as, as a reporter as well for the Courier. So kind of odd to me and Matthew Elder sitting there <laughs> trying, trying not to celebrate amongst other, other journalists. But um, so aye, that's how I kind of got really into it and like I said, I've not really been going as much as I could in the last 10, 10, 10 years or so because I've got two young girls who unfortunately are the Rovers daft so I've been trying to get along but I've got a wee bit more free time now so hence the reason I'm kind of into the SLO role and hopefully get, get along to all the kind of home and away games as much as I can you know. Yeah brilliant and um, Nicola for yourself what's, uh, what's your backstory with the Rovers how did you become involved? Yeah, so probably a wee bit later to the party um, than Craig, although I am a couple of years older than him. Um, so I think my first Rovers game was probably around about 92, 93, so I'd have been maybe about 13, 14, and it was literally um, a couple of friends at school who were really mad daft Rovers fans had invited me along to a game and that that was my first experience and I was I was hooked. I'd always loved football, um, but I a tomboy growing up, um, but no kind of grassroots stuff for girls back then. So um, going along to support the team, loved it, loved it. And then probably fell away for a wee bit, I would say, in, in my late teens and early 20s, family, you know, had kids of my own. And it wasn't really until they kind of got up and got involved in the um, community club side of things that I started coming back along to the games. I'd always kind of followed from a distance, but um, yeah, certainly over the last, I would say, five years or so, um, being a regular, you know, at the club and coming back down to home matches and getting to as many away games as possible. Probably been to more over the last couple of seasons, um, which has been been great. Really, really enjoyed that. And my youngest is football daft place for the community club as I said so um there's there's that connection there and and as as you know Robbie you know I was involved with the um the Rory Club so that was probably my first volunteer role um with it with the club was looking after the, the under 12 supporters and I was privileged enough to to do that um and really really enjoyed it and that that kind of wound up this season and hopefully will be relaunched but um yeah it was looking for something else to get my teeth into as far as volunteering was concerned and and here I am. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things that did come out of the club 1883 was I know that um, Andrew Barrowman was sort of saying that they were hoping to, to really sort of vamp the, the Rory Club, which will be interesting to see yeah. how that goes, particularly for younger fans. As of course, uh, the first time that we met was that meeting last summer uh, with uh, yourself and me and Duncan. Um, I went along to the Volunteers Day and uh, again, you think how much progress has been made since that point in terms of the club. It's incredible. Um Craig, just going to come back to you just for a moment. Just what sort of attracted you to the Supporters Liaison Officer role when you, you first started? I feel like a, a press interviewer myself now. No, you're, a, you're, a, a you're manager. Absolutely. Like I said, the whole thing about the Rovers is that there's that many different fan groups. It's, it tends to be a bit disparate. So I kind of thought, well, it was advertised as kind of being that, almost like a unifying bridge between the fans and the club. And I thought to myself, well, as I say, I've got a bit more free time these days, so I thought to myself, I can devote some time to it and, and get right into it. So, and obviously, I just wanted to kind of, like, like Nicholas says, it's the whole volunteering thing as well. Let's like say we're, we're not being paid, we're, <laughs> sadly, we're not, we're not being paid, we're using our own time for this sort of stuff. Um, so, it's just great to get, get along. And I see even just going along speaking to, to Andy, Andy Barman, and, and Alan Halliday when we're kind of talking through the role. Um, the, the plans for the club are fantastic. It just it gets you really enthusiastic. And I came out of that meeting thinking, right, that was definitely the right thing to do and kind of put my name forward for that because, like I say, I do think we're going places, which is great. No, absolutely. I, I think that that's the, the sort of infectious enthusiasm that comes out of the club and it's directly from the top, as you say, um, any sort of interactions that you have and just the, the sort of feeling behind things um, has grown so much over the year. Um I'm just going to come back to you, uh, Nicola, just now. Just um, what's going to be involved in the role? So, as Craig's kind of mentioned, it's it's very new. We're, we're just kind of starting up. But our hope is that, um, as he said, we're, we're, we're a bridge effectively for, between the, the club themselves and all the, the supporters groups and those that aren't affiliated with supporters groups as well, of course. So um, any issues, any concerns, any kind of feedback that um, supporters have, you know, they can bring it to us and then we can obviously relay, relay it back to the, the club. 
any announcements, any kind of big messages that are being cascaded from the club will come through us and there'll be an opportunity to obviously um, enter into discussions with supporters, various supporters club, clubs and, and as we say, just everybody that fills up this, this, the main stand and the south stand um, at, at a home game um, would obviously like to try and um, get a little bit more interactive with our supporters and, and try and arrange some kind of forums where we could hear their views but we're always available, home games, you know, we've got our, our social media links. Unfortunately, our email's not up and running at the moment. We've had mega technical issues with that um, as far as reaching out to us via email. But, you know, we're, we're dead approachable um, and we'll be hoping to, to when we get um, into, the next, into next season for away games, trying to provide supporters with a wee bit more information about, um, you know, how to get to the away games, where's best to park, where's the local pubs that would be um, suitable to go and have a drink, all the kind of sort of logistical stuff that makes going to away, away matches a wee bit more enjoyable. So, yeah, it's a, it is a new role um, and we'll, we'll look to kind of expand it and develop it really to meet the needs of the supporters, to be honest. But um, I think that's probably our blueprint at the moment, but certainly we'll expand as we go. No, that's perfect. Um, and obviously you guys have got the, the shared Twitter account there uh, where any sort of queries will be able to come through. And as you mentioned, there is information on the uh, that you can send via email when that gets set up. Um, I'm sure you'll be be quick to let us know. So uh, looking forward to, to very much seeing sort of how this pans out moving forward. Um, and I, we all know that football clubs are a two-way street um, in terms of the, the relationship between the fans and the club and getting messages put across and it's a useful resource for, for sort of both parties um involved in it. So yeah, very interested to see how, how things pan up pan out and uh, obviously wish the, the two of you the best of luck with it. So um we'll move forward um into the 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 footballing chat now. Um before we move on to the Morton game, um PFA Championship Team of the Year and Player of the Year nominations have came out of last week and uh, two Rovers players um, in particular have been involved. Now, Christina, I'm going to come to you firstly um, with the, the Player of the Year, um, which uh, Lewis Vaughan has been nominated for. Um, how proud are you of that moment to, to see Lewis Vaughan up for the, the, the Player of the Year given a, a, the season that he's had? Oh, buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. I'm delighted. I always say I'm delighted for Lewis Vaughan with anything that he does. I've said it many times on this podcast that I just want everything that he can possibly be given, I want him to have it all. So this is like another notch on that belt for him. Um, I think thoroughly deserved. Absolutely hope he, hope he wins it. I think he's a very worthy nominee. Um, He's been brilliant this season. I felt like, I don't know if I'm wrong in saying this, but I felt like I picked up from him a bit of frustration recently and that I don't think he's been scoring as many goals as he would like. Uh, we all know that he kind of puts pressure on himself to do that and prides himself on that. So I've kind of sensed from him a growing sense of, I just want to score goals, just get me on the pitch kind of thing. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I've kind of felt like it's been lingering around him. So I was delighted when he scored um, up in Inverness um, and yeah just I, I just hope that he kind of looks at it as a, a badge of honour he deserves it I think he's had a brilliant season yet again and I think he deserves all the praise that we can give him I think uh, that's again something that you'll struggle to find any Rovers fan that doesn't have a glowing praise for, for Lewis Vaughan and, and what he's capable of and what he's done for the club uh, just in general. I think we've really seen the benefit this year of uh, him having a full free season behind him and being able to just get his teeth in and get stuck into football and I'm sure that, as you say, I think there has been frustrating moments for him, I don't doubt that um, across the season because he is the type of player that will just want to play every single game possible. But um, I know that it, he's been carefully managed, of course, by Ian Murray and John Potter and the rest of the group to, to make sure that we're keeping him in the best position possible. But it's just, as you say, it's great to see him back on the goal trail again uh, up against Inverness. Um, the other player that got, uh, has been, obviously, the recipient of a lot of glowing praise off this podcast, uh, Scott, is Mr Sam Stanton. Now, He's been nominated, or he's been elected into the team of the year by his peers. Uh, so it's voted for by the players. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Mr. Fantastic. Now, he's, uh, 
he's been brilliant this season. I mean, when the whole team of the year came out and there was a little bit of debate, obviously people are kind of forgetting that it was voted by the players and they all get... I, I was actually listening to a podcast uh, yesterday that they were talking about it and saying that they actually all get uh, like a sheet of paper and then have to vote on certain positions and who they've came up against and whatever and everyone used to think uh, like oh they'll just vote for their mates on other teams or if they've played for another team they'll probably just vote for them or that but from what the guy that was speaking about was saying like that's that doesn't really go on everybody knows who's been good and who's not been good and they're not going to vote for somebody that's not had a good season so I think it's quite right that Stanton is getting the recognition that he is I mean, also, was it Leanne Crichton came out uh, this week and said that she has put him forward for her um, uh, vote for player of the season in the championship as well, which is somebody that also is with the BBC most weeks when they're doing it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, she watches plenty of championship football. So for her to come out and say that, then, yeah, it's not just us being biased uh, towards Stanton, but... I think, to be honest, the two of them, Vaughn's been brilliant this season and it's good to just get him up basically a full season again because it's been so many seasons that he's just not got the run of games due to injuries or whatever. But um, no, it's been good to see Vaughn back in. I was actually a wee bit surprised that it was Vaughn and not Stanton for the player of the year. But at the end of the day, how many times do you actually see it's goal scorers that win players of the year? I mean, it's the same in the... In pretty much every league, I think, other than League One, where it's basically just the Falkirk team. But uh, I think everybody else, it's all strikers that are uh, involved in it. So the goal scorers get the headlines, but I, I do think that Stanton uh, is, well, he's loved by the fans. And it was just brilliant that we had got that extension on him earlier in the season as well. Yeah, definitely. I did I did find it funny on the, uh, the Leanne Crichton uh, tweet that there was a Dundee United fan trying to claim that Sam Stanton had been injured for half the season. No <laughs> idea what season they've been watching because it was missing for about five games. It was very, very noticeable for us. Um, Nicola, Ian Murray came out in the press after the Cali game uh, saying that he was quite surprised that um, big Kevin Dabrowski hadn't been uh, included for the, the team of the year. Was that something that you, you agreed with yourself? Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Totally. I think I think how he has not been like a first team goalkeeper up until now just blows my mind when you see some of the saves that he's had for us over the last season. And yeah, do you know what? He's made he's made mistakes, but do you know what? What what experienced keeper doesn't doesn't make mistakes? I think his quality um over the last few games has just has just shone through and he's really He's found his stride, he's found his feet and he's yeah, he's just going for strength to strength. So I think we're really, really lucky to have him. He's still a young keeper. He's got lots of developing still to do. Um, and I see a really kind of bright, shiny future for him. And hopefully that, that's at Rovers for the next, the next, definitely the next few seasons anyway. But yeah, um, I think I think Ian's, Ian's spot on. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was interest in Big Kev. Um, from Premiership clubs um, going forward, but I think he knows. I, he knows Kirkcaldy is where he needs to be. Ah, he, he does love the town, and um, he's he's got a, a real affinity. He's just a, a very nice person, and you'll see him out and about, and uh, just a brilliant guy. And he's just he's the type of character that you want in your squad, and just someone that fans can sort of see as a bit of a beacon, and they they gather around them, and yeah, just full of support for the for the big man. It's interesting that people. People might look at Dabrowski and say, oh, but he's made mistakes. But then you look and even Callum Ferry, who is the the player that got into the team of the year as goalkeeper from Queen's Park, he's had an excellent season, but he's still made plenty of mistakes for them. Um, and he was kept out by Callum McKenna at the start of the season as well, which makes it an even more interesting dynamic. Uh, Craig, just to come to you, um, on the matter of the, the player of the year and team of the year, um, were there any honourable mentions that you would have had in there from the, the Rovers' perspective? Yeah, for Rover, you've, you've already covered him, Big Kev, obviously. Um, I texted him after the Inverness game on Friday, he says, you're going no place in. Because I think, I think the votes must have come in before in, the Inverness game, because he was just he's single-handedly got us the three points, I think, on Friday night. Um, obviously, Sam Stanton was in there, Louis in there as well. Um <sighs> To be honest, there's, there's been that many Rovers players this season that's, that's kind of stepped up that could easily fit into that team of the year. I suppose 
there's obviously going to be a lot of Dungeon United players for for obvious reasons, but nah, I think I think the the ones we've mentioned, the, the, the main ones, will probably get in there. But like I said, there's a few that I would probably put in there. I mean, I think Josh Mullins had a brilliant season for us. I think Kyle Turner's had some brilliant games for us as well. I think he, if he got a right run in the squad, I think he'd be he'd be up there as well. Um, but aye, there's been there's been plenty plenty of overs players, which is great to see. But aye, I think I think they've probably got it right in this occasion in terms of the balance of the overs players. And as I say, we've mentioned the three that I'd probably have in there as well. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd fully agree with that. I think it's always going to be difficult because a lot of teams have had good seasons. Dundee United have done really well. Uh, Peyton and Brian Graham up top, um, just really clinical forwards. Brian Graham hit 20 goals for the season last weekend and just a, a player that, again, that we, we as Rovers fans, we know what he's all about. Um, and then from the Rovers perspective as well, I think you can consider that it's been a very much a team effort this season. Um, we've had goals across the pitch. We've had some really stellar performances from a lot of players um, who just defensively um, we've done, I think we're now the, the third um, most compact defence in the league um, now. But yeah, just over the piece, just so many late goals at this, in the first sort of third of the season that it was very much one where you can point and look at the team overall and give everyone all a praise because it's not been some one standout player mm. carried by uh, carrying 10 other players. It's been very much a team effort from our perspective to get to where we're at. Um, so now we'll turn ahead to Saturday. As I say, we made a long trip down the M8 to, to Greenock um, to get that email from the club saying that all roads lead to Greenock, which personally I thought was a truly depressing thought. Uh, but here we are. Um, Scott, just to come to you now, I, I'm going to lower the tone a bit here. Colin Stevens in charge for this match. More than have 104 bookings so far this season, which uh, <laughs> to quote Duncan Cameron, is a number which would make even Graham Kilgour and hospitality happy with. Um, so, just going to check with you. Um, what are your thoughts heading into the game and how important is it for us to stay disciplined with the playoffs coming up? Yeah, I mean, any time that I see the initials C Stephen down for our game, I do get a shiver down my spine that there's going to be a red card involved in the game. I think there's only one game that he's done with us that there wasn't a red card in it, and I think that was the one of the Dunfermline games this season, actually. But um, I think it was the one that was on... I can't remember which one it was, but I'm sure it was a, a derby game this season. But, I mean, we know his history between when we were playing Inverness and stuff like that. But I see him even just sometimes on sports scene, like in the SBL, and there's some red cards and yellow cards you're going, I don't know what he's looking at. It's, But at the same time, we do have to just try and keep the head, just get, get on with our game. If Morton really, they've got nothing to play for now, if they really want to rile us up or just be in our faces, let them. But I I mean, we'll go on to obviously our team lineups and stuff like that, but I actually can see in Murray making changes for this game purely down to the fact of we know what Doug Emery's like and I do think he'll be like, oh, let's try and show them what we're made of, sort of. And I could see them actually trying to rile our, our sort of players up. And the last thing we re really need is a suspension out of this game. Yes, it might mm -hmm. only be one game, but still, at the end of the day, you don't want any suspensions hovering over anybody, especially a straight red, because even there's a chance that that could be more than a game. So, um, yeah, we just need to keep the head, and I, I hope that we can just, yeah, battle on with our own game, and I, I'm hoping, actually, that the pitch is in decent condition. I know it's, what, the 25th of um, April or something now, but we've still not had great weather in April, so... I do worry that the pitch might not be great for us as well, knowing, knowing what we're like in terms of trying to get the ball down and play. So, no, I'm I'm still looking forward to the game. I just, I when I see Colin Stephen down, I, I don't get too excited about the game. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't blame you. One thing I will say to the credit, I think of, um, I'm certainly not sure what it's like nowadays, but certainly over the last few years, Kaplow's generally tended to be quite a bowling green of a surface, um, from what I'm uh, aware of. Um, the, the stands might uh, get slaughtered from me, but generally the pitch seems to, to hold up quite well. 
And yeah, I, I think that that's a very, very important point to make. Just focus on playing our own game because it's so easy to get roped into silly little battles or, or digs and things like that that can turn into to moments of madness. Um, particularly, we know what Morton are like. Nobody's got to be any surprises um, when you play against them. And I know that their fans do get irked about that sort of uh, hatchet men label, but I mean, they're in that position for a reason where they've got 104 bookings. So uh, they've only ever had one red card, though. That's a, a very surprising thing. So they do know how to turn it off and turn it on when they need to. Um, Christina, just to come to you next, Steve Murray was in the courier saying that he's going to be um, he's looking at potentially rotations in the squad just based on uh, these final few games. Are you quite happy to hear that? Uh, the chance for lads like, uh, obviously, Dylan Corr played on Friday against Cali Thistle, put in a really good performance, and then you've got the likes of Scott McGill. Um, are you quite potentially looking forward to seeing them being able to make a mark? Yeah, definitely. And I, even when I was thinking of a lineup, I changed it based on the fact that it was Colin Stephen and the fact that it was Morton. And I feel like we should be protecting Lewis Vaughan at all costs, wrap him up in cotton wool, and keep him far away from that pitch on Saturday. Is my would be my advice. I refuse to go to Morton, by the way, because I am not <laughs> spending my time and money to go and watch football fifty percent of the afternoon because we all know that Morton don't play football. And on the, the note about the whole the fans being offended, how can you possibly be offended by that? Why would you not just own the fact that that's what your team are like? Because that's what's even more annoying. Why are you denying it? It's just it's just no enjoyable football for me to watch at all. I think we will try our best to do what we do, but I do think it's difficult. Like I think the Rovers will find it difficult to play our kind of game. I mean, you've seen us all season. Like We try and do it, and then all that happens is we just get fouled. And I was thinking, I don't know what they're called. I think, those, I think that's called Zorbin. When you go inside the ball, <laughs> and you're like inside it and it just rolls and then like it's like a game you do and I'm like maybe we should just put the players on that on Saturday afternoon because I'm genuinely worried that somebody getting an injury at this point No, in our luck someone would jar their back they'd get halved and then <laughs> do their back falling forward and get a go um, I think it's yeah I think the, the main focus has got to be um, making sure that we're not picking up any, any daft injuries or suspensions and I think that We've had such a good season. We're, we're, uh, if we win on Saturday, we go ahead of uh, Kilmarnock's total when they won the league. Um, and I think after that, you'd be very hard-pressed to, to push any of our title winners um, over the recent years because there's been quite a few teams that have been up over the 70-point mark. Um, so, yeah, I think that the, the key focus has got to be that sort of discipline. And I know that you, you've mentioned there about how modern are. Um, but, yeah, you I think to a degree, you do want to see a bit of ownership on that um, from clubs. And I'm sure that we can give that element as well. The, the last game at Starks by no means was a football in performance because that was a very turgid affair from both sides. But we know what we can do as a club. And the last time out at Capolo, we, we walked away with a 2-1 win, two Aidan Connolly headers. So more of the same for that. Um, so yeah, Craig, just to, to touch on that again, games against Morton so far have generally been tight this season, but with the pressure being off, do you think that's going to be quite helpful for for Ian Murray? I think so. I, I completely agree with Christina, though. It's, it's a bubble wrap job. Wrap them up in cotton wool, just make sure we get out of there in uh, kind of one piece. Um, and again, I, I, I totally agree with him. We should be rotating the squad. We should be playing some of the guys that's not got a, as much game time this season because it'll be a great chance to shine. And again, it's the deadest of rubbers as well. It's like when we, last, last season we were the only club that had nothing to play for essentially so those kind of games towards the end of the season was just, was just nothing encounters so I'd quite happily take a nil nil and get out of there with no bookings no the injuries that would be the, the, the ideal scenario I think but I mean again Dungeon United showed, showed against them that they're, they're beatable in terms of they, they can capitulate and I'd love to see Rovers actually win a game by more than one goal that would be, that would be the dream scenario for me I think if we actually maybe got a 2 or 3 nil out of it but like I say I just uh, I think both clubs, well, Rovers will probably have their eye on the playoffs, obviously, but I think in terms of a spectacle, I don't think we're going to get it. I mean, you mentioned that Tuesday night game, it was almost anti-football, that 0-0 draw down at the start, so there was just nothing in it. Um, and I can see the same again. Hopefully I'm wrong for, for all those who go along. Um, hopefully it's a, it's a nine-goal thriller or something like that. But again, the, the main thing is just to come out unscathed, I think, to be honest. 
tell you what, see, try to do a podcast after that game. I can't remember if it was me and Duncan that had to do the effort, but honestly, that was a, an award ceremony um, esque <laughs> effort to, to get that done. Um, just uh, it was a, a very unforgettable game, which I know that the players don't go out and put in go out intentionally to do that, but sometimes games just go into that, don't they? Um, so, Nicola, just to, to turn to yourself, what are your thoughts heading into the game? Um, and do you think it's it's the right idea to, to sort of be looking to rotate players now that we're, we're sort of dead rubber territory uh, with this yeah, match coming up? I do, I do. And I think for all the reasons that obviously Craig and Christina have, have already mentioned about, you know, stretching the legs and making sure that we've got the, the strongest available team for the playoffs. But I think for the for the players as well, you know, we'll have to remember that there's a lot of them that are under their contracts coming to an end. They want to be getting the opportunity to kind of go out there and show what they can do and, and put a bit of themselves about, which again does give me the fear a wee bit that there might be, you know, a bit excitement for some of them especially if uh, if they've not had a had a start or a run out for a while to, to kind of go out and show what they could do and be a wee bit maybe too enthusiastic and, and get a book in so let's hope that um it can come with a little bit of restraint as well but no definitely nice nice to see it was nice to see dylan um cord get getting a run out and again scott mcgill as well as somebody that i'd like to see a wee bit more more of over the next um couple of games but yeah, just everybody getting the opportunity before before the playoffs, just to make sure that you know, should we need them, they're they're ready and ready to go. Yeah, I think that um, I fully agree, and I think it's an interesting point, as you say, with players coming to the end of the contract, it does give them a real opportunity to potentially be able to kick on. One thing that was quite interesting, and I know that that Duncan touched on it, I believe, in the post match against Inverness, was Dylan Core's situation where. Um, He's, he's came back into the team and played that match and then Ian Murray's talking about next season with him but we're all under the impression that he's signed a one-year deal so whether that's triggered an extension you don't know um, so I think that yeah definitely going to be interesting to see how we line up and whether we, we do experiment with it um, and being able to, to sort of utilise depth that we've got in our squad um, Morton or I don't think they're without their injury worries. I certainly know that Lewis Strap's going to be missing out for this game, which is always nice to hear because you're not watching balls getting cannoned into the box and the slowest ever walk for Throwings because he does take about an hour to do that. Um, George Oakley seems to have rekindled a bit of form for them, but overall over their last 10, I think they're only a couple of wins out of their last 10. But as we say, both teams are very much into dead rubber territory. Neither teams, Morton can move about positions, but whether they're I know that the the club themselves will probably be a bit concerned about prize money, but I think the main thing for Rovers is potentially going to be momentum and just sort of keeping keeping going as we are um, and making sure that we've got that going. And Airdrie are playing against uh, Dundee United um, on the Friday night and Partick are at home to air. Um, so it'll be interesting to keep an eye on those games uh, to see how things pan out. So we'll turn now into our starting elevens and predictions. Um, so we'll go through our starting elevens first. So Christina, do you want to kick us off? Yep, first time ever. I've not put Dubrovsky in goals. I've put McNeil in goals. Um, then I've gone for Cor, James Brown, Murray, and Dick, Matthews, Burn, Turner. Easton, Miguel, and then Rudden. Interesting choices. Um, I think that'll be the goalkeeper one in particular. I'm keen to see how everyone goes with this. Um, so, Scott, have you got your starting 11 there? See, I thought I was going to be the only one putting Andy McNeil in goals here. <laughs> I don't I think generally I, would. I, I've got three players. I want Kev, I've got, Kevin Dabrowski and Cotton Will. I've got three players that I'm not even taking to Capilo on Saturday. And they are Sam Stanton, Louis Vaughan, and Kev. They, they are not even leaving the life. They can just do whatever they want with their family. I'm the day. same, Scott. The, the three of them don't need to be there on <laughs> Saturday. So I've got... Yeah, again, yeah, they're not in my lineup either. They're, they need to be at home. <laughs> yeah, I've got... I think McNeil this is unthinkable goals. for our podcast, I've been saying. <laughs> Uh, James Brown right back I've gone Keith Watson with Dylan Corr again we need some people on the bench obviously so I've got Ewan Murray just on the bench <laughs> as well just 
I, I think it will be good to just keep giving Cor some game time than now, but also you need to keep playing the likes of Watson to try and just keep giving him minutes. Because obviously he missed out last week as well. Uh, I know there's going to be a house in Ayrshire that gets a bit giddy at this, but I would give Liam Dick the captaincy on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, he's unbeaten yeah and obviously I know Keith Watson's there but I've not got uh, Scott Brown on my team so that was my reasoning for that I've gone also with Matthews and Byrne in the middle of the park Uh, but I've gone Connolly out on the right I've got Turner playing at 10 Mullen out on the left because it works and then uh, Zach Radden up front uh, and then the likes of obviously on the bench, you'll then have Bruni, Miguel, Easton, Callum Smith, Hamilton, uh, Ewan Murray, uh, and obviously Robbie Thompson as well. But I'll be interested to see if we see um, Callum Hanna back on the bench because that's now the Lowland League finished. We won. We won. We won. Right. Okay. Clarify on that point. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, our friend, the the Texan with the Stetson, um, I know that he'd sort of questioned this um, on a certain um, staple diet of Scottish football forum, um, but the registration will still be with Albion Rovers, I believe. So okay. unless we want to incur a, a 3 0 forfeit, mm-hmm. then uh, mm-hmm. he'll not be playing um, or featuring on the bench, um, as for the rest of the loanies. Um, and I know that. Um, is it this weekend East Kilbride are playing um, Bucky Fissel? In the not playoffs? anymore. They're not what playing happened? them anymore because <laughs> Bucky Thistle cannot move into the SPFL. Apparently they don't meet the bronze criteria. How 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 have I not heard of this? How have I well, not I'm heard of this? this I complete... genuinely thought you were just playing up to this. I thought you must have heard about this. No, no, legitimately. It came out legitimately. about two, three hours ago, something like that. But it's, ah, it's right. came out, so East Kilbride are now looking for a friendly for Friday. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I but, was going uh, to say that, Arne, Arne, I was going to wish him all the best, but apparently not. Aaron, just go and join Lewis Vaughan, Sam Stanton, Kev Dabrowski on your wee day out. Get them sent in, <laughs> send them off to, I don't know, play mini golf or something like that. Um, Nicola, um, we'll, we'll move on to your start in a living, um, if you've got one there. Yeah, I, I do, but I've, I've kind of I've I've been convinced to change based on the whole cotton wool bubble wrap scenario <laughs> because I'm thinking to myself actually it makes sense. So I did have big Kevin go, but now I'm thinking mm, he could maybe get a wee rest. Um, <laughs> we could swap him out. Um, but I did have Kevin go, and then I had um, Dicko Watson, Cor, and James Brown for our back four. Burning Matthews, and then in the spirit of let's shake it up a little bit, um, Josh Mullen, Kyle Turner, and Callum Smith, and then Rodden um, as our, our striker, and give give Hamilton a, a wee rest as well. So yeah, trying to kind of to shake it up a wee bit. I think if it had been like a normal, we're still kind of pushing. It would have looked very very different. But aye, in the spirit of resting legs and stretching other legs, that's what I've went for. Okay, and uh, Craig, for yourself? I completely agree. By the way, that East Kilbride thing is an absolute joke, so read up on that, Robbie, when, <laughs> when you come off this podcast. But I, even, they've not even replaced them with breaking, you know, it's just unbelievable. It's like, this, what's the point of having a league that's, season? That's, that's what surprised me as well, them. that breaking haven't even been told that you're jumping in. See, see before we come to your lineup, like I'm, I'm just interested to hear everyone's thoughts. Like, if you found out your club had not done their research and like found out that their stadium was not fit for a purpose before, would you be annoyed at your club, or is it more annoyed at the regulations? Just as a, as an interest, it seems very like Rovers oh. with Ryan Stevenson and goals. I, I'm, feels I'm like that certain moment. Bucky, Bucky knew this was coming from what I've read on, on like fans that are of the Highland League and no Bucky. It seems to be that the club knew about this. So the fact that they knew about this is what more worrying, I would say, for whether they actually even want to go up. That's another question. That Do they actually right, need point. to or want to go up? So I, I think they probably don't actually want to go up and they've probably just done it out of spite to just win the Highland League and then <laughs> unlucky break in. Because that's a, <laughs> definitely a thing in the, in the non-leagues where clubs so sort of 
there's there's been speculation about clubs like Darvel and Auchin Lake not really wanting to move out of the west of Scotland. So they'll like Darvel, there was one year when they got to the playoffs and then seemingly about four of their lads went on holiday and nobody was concerned about it. I'll probably have Mick Kennedy sliding into my DMs raging about that. But he's at East Kilbride. He's got friendly star range, so he doesn't need to worry about it. He's got chicken shops to run. Um, I just... Very surreal. Uh, Craig, anyway, sorry about any well, listeners uh, who I actually came on for Rovers I chat. Cause... <laughs> I digressed in the Lowland League chat, sorry. Um, aye, so I'll, I'm pretty much similar lines of his arrest, Big Kev. So McNeil, uh, James Brown, Liam Dick, Ewan Murray, but uh, to be honest, I'd try and rest him as well. I could do, do me having two centre-backs fit for the players, but I've got Ewan in there. Uh, Sean Byrne, Callum Smith, uh, Josh Mullen, Dylan Corr, Kyle Turner, Scott Brown, and I've got running up front as well because I think Hamilton needs a, a wee rest. I'd like to see him against Arbroath because I think he'd, he'd do a number on Arbroath. Um, but I, I'd like to kind of have, have that sort of lineup. I think. Yeah, um, I think that it's interesting. Just so everyone's, we've all all came in with a, the sort of approach of bubble wrap, I think, uh, and keeping our, our players as safe as possible. So I've actually started Robbie Thompson in goals. Um, I feel like it'd be a good opportunity just to give him a game, just to, to, to test the water with him. Um, a back three with uh, Dick Corrin Watson. Again, Keith Watson for me, I think. Uh, just give him the minutes and just see how he's handling it. And if he needs to rest next week, then so be it. Um, wing backs, I would go with Aidan Connolly and uh, McGill. Uh, just to, to see how McGill does, because again, I think he's a player that's got a lot of... He's, he, he offers a lot of energy, Scott McGill, and I think that he, against Morton, with them missing Lewis, um, Lewis Strap, it would be interesting to see how he would go going forward. Um, I would play Byrne and Matthews as sort of two home midfielders with Kyle Turner um, sitting in behind Rudden and Hamilton, so that would be my start in 11. Um, so we'll do a round of predictions next. Um to go to yourself, Craig, firstly. I'll take a 1 0 win for Rovers. Anyway, Scrappy. Scrappy will do if it's the same as what it was on Friday night. We'll take that. <laughs> so 1 0 Rovers. Scott? Uh, I can actually see quite a few goals in this game, more to the fact because Morton don't have much to play for. So I'm not expecting them to be sitting in or anything like that. And the fact that we can play some good football might be able to cut them open. So I'm going to say that we'll, uh, we'll win 3-2. Uh, Christina? I'm going for a draw, 1-1. One, one. OK. And um, Nicola, what are your thoughts? I'm going to go Rovers 1-2-1. One, one. Well, I think uh, we're all relatively positive uh, coming into that. So, yeah, for me, I think it'll be a 2-0 Rovers win. I think that Morton... If they've got any younger lads, I think that they'll definitely chuck those on uh, to give them some first-team exposure, especially in a game against uh, a team at the top end of the table. Um, I know it's it's a bit of a dead rubber, uh, to say the least, but yeah, I think that it's a good opportunity for Rovers to, to sort of stretch their legs and, and give some lads. And again, you can play with a bit of freedom. There's nothing hinging on the result. Uh, we've had such a good season so far um, and everything to play, uh, play for in those playoff games, um, which... Again, the date's got announced for today, so we've got everything to look forward to that, and I'm be keeping a keen eye on tickets and looking forward to that with a, a Friday night fixture under the lights at Starks Park um, to, to go ahead. Um, so we're going to move on. We actually had a late substitution in the podcast where uh, Duncan was actually going to be hosting, but he did have to drop out due to our commitments, unfortunately. Um, because of that, I was going to be skipping tonight, but I've stepped in, and as a result of that, uh, should McStay or should Argo um, was delegated off to uh, Christina who has done our preparation I believe and she's going to be asking the questions this evening so uh, for those not familiar six or seven questions about a previous or current rover um, and we are to guess um, on each attempt who it is um, so Christina uh, do you want to kick us off with should McStay or should Dargo Okay, there's six clues tonight. I'm just writing down everybody's name so I don't miss anybody. Right, number one. I was born in Kirkcaldy. Yeah. Anybody want to take a guess? Ian oh, Davidson. Hannah. Kieran Bowie. Who said Callum Hannah there? Scott. Uh, oh. 
Scott said Callum Hanna. Aye. I'll go with Davo as well. Davo? Yep. I'm going to text. <laughs> I'm off to TX right, Fiona to find out if uh, Callum was I born sign... in Kirkcaldy. <laughs> <laughs> I signed for the Rovers under 20s in July 2016. I'm going to change um, Adam Masson. Mm -hmm. Wait, actually, what year? Okay. They... 2016. Ooh. And they joined the, what, the under-18s at that point? Still Adam Masson anyway. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> so I signed for the Rovers under 20s in right. July 2016. Somebody said Kieran Bowie. Yeah, I said Kieran Bowie. I've got a feeling that's right then. Yeah, Nicola said Kieran Bowie. You might have been the first person well, to get on the anyway. first guest. I think that's right. <laughs> Here she's got that first Alberagian with you, Nick. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> right, number three. I play defensive midfield and can play central midfield. Oh, it's no Kieran Bowie. Ooh. It just got interesting. It just got interesting. So defensive midfield and central midfield. Uh, yeah. James Berry. Oh, that could be a good show. How old's Arden, aren't it? That yeah. would probably work in art, to be fair. You going Arn Arn go Arnett, Arnett, yeah. I'm wondering if James Berry was a wee bit before that. Okay. You won't be far off that, to be unfair. Mm. Like, Ready? What about Craig? Has Craig had a... Ready for clue four? James Berry, actually. Oh, Craig. Yeah, I think so. James Berry as well. I I'll stick... Uh, right, number four. The, I... yeah. Oh, sorry, Scott. No, I'll, I'll go with... Uh... It's not going to be him, but I know he's for the area, is it? That Fionn McLeod something that was in midfield. Aye, Fionn McLeod. Kai. Aye. Aye. Is it like the shoulders or something there? But... Aye. Okay. Number four, I currently play in League Two. No, it's James Berry. <laughs> well, uh, James Berry. I think it right. was James Berry. <laughs> Anybody want a different guest than James Berry? No. Nope. No, I'm locked in now, I think. <laughs> I'll stick with Aaron. <laughs> Number five. Number five, I made 12 appearances at Wraith Rovers. Well, I'll just go straight on to Clue 6. Aye, if you could. This is going to seal the deal. I left Wraith Rovers on a free transfer to Stirling University. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Result. So that one's a tie between me and Craig. Well I think. done, Robbie. It was James <laughs> Berry. Oft. Well, I'm uh, exceptionally proud of that one because well that, that was a really, really tough one, Christina. You had us all over the shop with it. I'm actually with surprised with the stat that he played 12 games. Uh, I, it's, uh, I suppose that that was over the, the sort of Gary Locke stroke, like. Uh, um, what's his name? Barry Smith seasons, eh? So, uh, it's uh, it's good to see how well yeah. he's done. He wasn't actually at the Rovers very long. Yeah. I thought he was there for longer. He's, he's yeah. done really well, um, sort of to to do what he's done with Stirling University, and then to go to to play as many games as he has for Stenhouse Muir and to be able to kick on. Um, and congratulations to him because it's it's great to see that he's a, a league winner now um, in League Two. Um, a huge achievement, and if you if you follow sort of the Terrace podcast, you can tell what it means to the sort of fan base with the way that sort of Craig Telfer is talking about things, um, and that's then how we are team. So, no, um, fair play. Uh, that will round off tonight's episode. So, thank you for taking the time to join us. Of course, we want to spend a really special thank you to to Craig and Nicola for joining us this evening um, on the podcast. Um, as ever, you can find us on social media and you can find the Supporters Liaison Officers. We'll put, make sure that we're including their Twitter in the, the tweet that we send out and in the, the YouTube and Spotify so that you can find them if you've got any questions. Um, hopefully not a flood of DMs for you guys um, to, to answer from frantic fans. Um, 
as ever, Instagram, you can find us there, Carol Handles Instagram. We've got the Etsy shop as well if you want to check out any of the merchandise that we've got on the go. Um, and, of course, we can be contacted on Twitter if you do need to get a hold of us. Um, but thank you for taking the time to listen. If you're travelling to Capelo, enjoy your trip there. Um, safeguard your shins and look after yourself. And uh, all the best for the weekend. Thank you for listening and goodbye.